There's so much land, guys. So much room for activities. I'm interrupting here real quick before Matt explains this whole thing. We are not to dis we are putting a disclaimer. Don't do this at home. Don't try this at home. The reason that we cleared that though. You telling them or I'm telling them? We can tell them together. Okay. What's up guys? Welcome back. Today is exciting. We have a big machine coming. Yep, I got the big dog, the homie from the neighborhood, same guy that lifted me up with my giant boards and helped me out there. He's coming back. I have a little bit of uh, brush that I have to flatten out because I'm gonna be building something on this land that's very important to me and near and dear to my heart. So I have to get the site prepped a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but you know, just a little something something to help me out and give me the better lay of the land. He seems to think that behind the chicken coop we have a ton of flatlands there. I'm gonna believe him because he goes in the woods. I don't really, but I think we don't have that much extra flat <laughs> I, I don't think it's a ton, but I'd say it's a quarter to a half acre at least um, of what I would think would be relatively flat land and it flies off of a cliff. But <laughs> I don't need much more than a quarter acre, so. So we're gonna go over there. He's gonna get it done and this is probably gonna go fast. I'm excited. Yep. so much land guys so much room for activities that was right there's a ton of flat spot i can't even believe it we could build a whole house there and now we can see a mountain view and everything we could build a whole house and we probably should just build a whole house but we're not going to build a whole house um it's relatively flat we didn't have it completely nuked um we do it this was just a project to kind of just scrape the very top to knock some trees down and stuff because I didn't want to do a site prep situation where like a bulldozer is going to come in and completely rip out everything and, and make it perfectly flat. I wanted the land to be disturbed as little as possible. When the other machine back in the day came down, you know, it was ripping through everything. It was running over the, the mice. It was running over the blind snakes. So it kind of made me sad. So for this one, I said, look, just scrape. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. Sorry. <laughs> just scrape the very, very top. Um, and even I still walked even through with them and found the trees that I wanted to keep and stuff like that. This was mostly just like really some really tall grasses and like a bunch of small dead, like little dead trees already. So this just needed to be cleaned up. He went through, made quick work of that and it was, it was good. But the reason, the reasoning behind that is because I wanted to keep as much like root mass as I could and as much biodiversity obviously on the land. I just didn't, didn't want to nuke everything. So when you do it that way though, you do encounter um, a different problem. This will grow back and I'll be able to just mow it with grass and stuff like that. But when you just barely scrape the surface and you don't disturb the soil too much, um, it leaves you with a problem. But you know, old gangster Maddie, I came up with a gangster solution. And don't worry guys, we're gonna get to the point of why we cleared the land also. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I'm sure that's what you're all wondering. Ever since moving to Puerto Rico, Matt has really excelled at learning Spanish, if you haven't noticed. He can talk to all the workers, he goes to the ferreterias, which are the hardware stores, he can get different parts, and I've kind of really let him take the lead on this, which has caused me not 
to be able to speak it as well. I can hear different things and I know a lot of words, but speaking it, I really don't have any experience in that. That's why I decided to step it up and use this video's sponsor, Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone can teach you many great languages, not only on your phone, but on desktop also. They have a ton of great features. For me, actually hearing the correct way to pronounce words and phrases and sentences has really helped me to be a lot more confident in going in public and trying it out myself. Rosetta Stone uses pictures and words for many different types of categories, travel, basics, shopping, and even health. Like many of you, we are pretty busy. That's why it's great that Rosetta Stone has lessons that are as short as five minutes, so no excuses. Plus, I never get bored because there's many different features. I use the phrase book to hear a native speaker pronounce common phrases and then practice saying them back. You can also use the audio companion to download lessons that you can use without Wi-Fi. Before you know it, Matt's gonna have to lean on me for speaking in town. If you're traveling soon, or maybe it's on your bucket list to learn a new language, lucky for you, Rosetta Stone is offering our viewers a lifetime subscription that's over 60% off for access to all of their languages for life. Hit the link in the description. So when you have the guy barely scrape the ground with the machine, what happens is you end up with a lot of these partial little baby trees that might have gotten broken off or whatever, but they stay pretty stiff. And not only are they unsightly, but if you try to run it over with a lawnmower, you'd think you could just run it over with a lawnmower, but it pushes down, the lawnmower goes over it, and then it comes back up. And then you back over it, and it just keeps popping up and down. It's a nightmare, but... Um, I have a solution that helps it grow because if you don't get rid of these, they'll start to sprout leaves again. So you got to kind of take care of them, get them done and taken care of. And I have a non-traditional way to do this. Kristen doesn't love it. No, but, it's highly dangerous. But I have a way that goes pretty fast and it solves this problem pretty quickly. I'm interrupting here real quick before Matt explains this whole thing. We are not to dis we are putting a disclaimer. Don't do this at home. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. Don't try this at home. <laughs> okay, tell them. Okay, so obviously when you have to chop bigger things before everyone corrects me in the comments and says that they have Home Depot's got the choppers. They got these things right here, is all I could find. These, and then they make like a plastic version of these, and basically these three hook up and they spin around but they don't the what? on the weed eater and the trimmer but they don't work they bend and they'll knock through like something as big around as a pencil maybe but 10 or 12 pencils in a row and they, they won't get through it and if you hit a rock or something bigger they bend and they become practically useless and with this too it grabs a lot of vines and it bogs down the trimmer a lot so i have tried the good boy the college boy way of saying I just follow the directions and I did it the way you know the TV tells me to do it but I decided that wasn't gonna work it was not suiting my needs out here in the jungle so I made the Jason Voorhees okay. camp killer special Jason Voorhees was the killer from what movie was that Halloween. the one where he go kill 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 ah, ah, ah. with the face mask <laughs> with the know, hockey mask. anyway he was a camp killer and he, he ripped people with like chainsaws and stuff. So I just took a circular saw blade, put it on the end of the trimmer, and it has been working fabulously. I'm sure there is a world where we live in where this blade could fly off and become a Chinese star that chops me off and, you know, gives me a peg leg. Or goes straight into your head. Straight into my head. I try not to go above too much for that reason, but I, I do, I do go above and get stuff up top. Um, I should probably wear a helmet and a heavy duty face mask with this, but I'm not really going to. It's been working really well, and you'll see, it's not too violent when you cut things with this. So you can see, that's about a two inch little tree there. Went through it, no issues, no like violent flying around, so it's pretty, 
it's pretty good for that. For these bigger ones, you want to slow down and take your time, but you know, it works really good. I feel safe doing it. And you know, this is a pretty hard little tree right here. So it just rips right through it, makes things so much easier. It just rained for a good bit, poured out of nowhere. So it's gonna be mucky, not happy working conditions, but I'm going to continue cutting all this and getting these big sticks out of the way. All right, so we got that spot clear, looking good. As you can see, the um, saw blade works really well. I think that uh, I'm sure with the gear head and stuff like that, whatever that would be called, my trimmer experts probably know, um, it's probably not good for it to have that much weight to balance. So it could wear that part out faster, but for me, it's a, it's a net win to have something that can just rip through this jungle and, and do a good job and not get too bound up. You can see I have a puddle of water here that's the product of not completely nuking the land and trying to keep it as natural as possible. And in that same mode of thinking, that same train of thought, I'm going to now be clearing these trees, this tree line here. Um, when the sun comes up over there, it shades this for about half of the day. So I need that to be cleared. And I could have had my guy just do it and nuke the whole place and get it all, you know, taken care of and flat cleaned up, but I'm going to top them. I'm gonna keep the trees at about seven feet. Um, so that way I can keep the roots, keep the trees going, and uh, hopefully, you know, keep this as natural as I possibly can. More work for me, but I believe the benefits outweigh the little bit of sweat equity that I have to put into it. As you can see, got all my brush piles knocked down behind me. The weed eater with the saw and it makes pretty quick work of just topping them trees. And I knocked a bunch down in the goat pen, so you probably hear them hollering, but they had a good time eating all the leaves and they were really having some, you know, overload of nutrients coming their way. So they were happy about that. But now I have the less fun part of dragging all the leaves away because I can't leave them where they're setting if I'm gonna get any work done later.
All right, so a lot of y'all thought I was playing about Mongoose Mateo, but I did I did save the skull to make my necklace. I know some of y'all were excited about that. So some of y'all were probably a little grossed out, but some of y'all were ready, were about it. So I decided to uh, not let you guys down and I'm gonna move forward with it. I had it in an ant pile and they ate most of it up and he went away, but they're still, you know, it's still not a wonderful situation. And uh, so I think what I need to do is boil the bones to make them nice and cleaned up and then in the ant pile that the uh the ants were eating them at i think i'm gonna go ahead and make my fire there so that i can get rid of any old remnants as well and we can be done with the mongoose and the evil and his evil ways for once and for all So a lot of y'all might be wondering, Matt, why'd you cut these bare sticks? That looks terrible and awful, but I've learned something over my short tenure here as a landowner and a farmer man. So I'm gonna show you what this should turn into in about two months. Two months it'll start turning and it saves, you know, it saves the nature. So this bush, as you can see here, I cut off, I cut this off about two months ago with a machete before I went into doing this, just so I could see exactly how they grow back. And I think this is called I don't know it's not propagation it's something else but when you trim it they still grow more leaves they keep that water coming up from the ground and they continue to grow so what my hope is is that all of this area is a nice bushy area because it keeps the ground cooler for the animals and obviously gives them some foraging as well so what i'm hoping is it all comes back nice and green so i don't lose all that nature All right, guys, it's time to tell you why we cleared the land. We didn't even get there. I expected to have told you that by now, but obviously work really built up with all those tree cuttings. I had no idea he was gonna trim all those trees. I thought he was just trimming like uh, the front layer of them. You really went ham in there. Well, Do you, kids even say ham anymore? I think we're, I think it's where bo only boomers say that. Only old people say we go ham. Okay, I didn't but, say uh, that. But and for any viewers that don't know what ham means, it means hard as a mother, mother shut your mouth. Hard as a mother shut your mouth. Don't get but demonetized. Either way, yeah, I, uh, I cut it down because you know I could have just had it mowed down, but I want to keep, I want to keep the grass. So it was a nightmare. That was a lot more work for me. But I think for the overall, you know, the pollinators, the bees, the birds that like all that stuff, the bugs, the worms, the centipedes, the beetles, you know. It's better to keep as much natural jungle as, as we can possibly keep. But I promise dragging all those trees, I probably drug two, three tons of brush. So that was kind of brutal. It was harder for me, but who cares? I'm young. I can work hard. No big deal. So we, the reason that we cleared that though, are you telling them or I'm telling them? We can tell them together. Okay. We didn't plan this. We can't we, tell them we together. We can't tell them together because it's, it's a bit of an explanation. <laughs> okay, you tell them. Okay, so we have to, we're finally getting our solar system in. Our uh, our batteries are here. We're kind of figuring out how to do that. And obviously it's not like the boat where you can just throw up two panels and run your little fridge and be good to go. This is going to be a much bigger system. So, And I have to configure it. The boat was a nightmare because I had that little cubby that I had to fit everything in. For this, I'm going to construct something so that I can configure the power system anyway i want to and that i'll be able to access it for repairs or maintenance and stuff like that easily so we have to build a little area that can't get any shading i left as much um as much vegetation as i possibly could but that's the only spot that we could really do it on the on our property because everything else has a hill that shades and um, this is the only spot that we could face it just a little bit south to get the most out of our our panel system so we're going to be moving forward with that that's going to be the next big project and a lot of you guys go crazy like why you didn't build a house why you didn't do this why you didn't do that for one reason i don't know how to build anything so i've been practicing i learned how to lay block now and i feel comfortable i've learned with some wood and some putting on some roofs on so i'm starting to feel more and more comfortable with my own skill set but also it's um you can't build a house without a big you know a big power setup so 
we were kind of waiting to get this thing figured out and get that done so that once we have the power erected and everything's going good there, we're going to be able to move a lot faster together on building the house because right now we're running off a generator, which means every two days I have to go get gas. Generator goes off 24 seven. It's a maintenance issue. And we power. also use our jackery back we, and forth. Yeah, we use that. So it's like right now I don't want to be in the middle of a huge project and then this is going out and I'm having to run to and fro. So it's been a learning experience. And also we need our heart. Once we have the heart of the property, the solar system running, making endless, you know, power i'm going to be able to make do laundry i'm going to be able to use my tools fix things it's going to go a lot easier and a lot smoother and it's going to make life better for us and i think you know after i get this constructed i'm going to be ready to start on the house so this will be the last big thing before we start with the big moves yeah so basically in short we are making a giant roofing system for panels yep. and we're making a small building to house our laundry and all of our batteries that we are putting in we're hoping the goal is for this battery system to work for our trailer and laundry and all that stuff now and then when we build our cabin house whatever villa whatever it's going to be we'll be able to transfer the system easily hopefully yeah i'll just be able to run a wire so it's going to be centrally located on the property so that i can just run run a wire from there and it's just my central power system that's going to work really really well if i run into that problem i could move the whole system into the cabin and then just run a wire to the rv and then i could uh just turn this whatever this dwelling is going to be into a, a farmhouse or a shed or a workshop or a, a barn so we're pretty excited about that but i want to say it now because what will happen is i'll build something and then everyone will cuss me out in the comments and say i did it wrong what i plan to do was face the panels at a slight tilt, like a, you know, 20 degree tilt, nothing crazy, um, toward the southeast. I think that that's gonna give me the most sun coverage, so that's how I'm gonna build my structure, but I'm probably a week or two out before I really start getting into that. I have to lay, you know, some things out different ways. So all my experts, all my geniuses that have been doing this for 20 years, I had a lot of deck boys come in that say, I've been building decks for 20 years. You didn't use joist hangers. You're going straight to hell, boy. So I say, <laughs> dang. So this will give you guys plenty of time to get the information to me and then I'll be able to absorb it and go, oh, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. I've heard all the research I do is east, southeast, or excuse me, south, southeast for solar panel uh, facing. So that's what I'm going to do. But let me know. Let me know before I start with this project. And did anyone notice Matt's new accessory? Y'all thought I was playing. <laughs> Y'all thought I was talking just to talk. It grosses me out. I thought he was going to do the full body wrap around, but I guess you'd have to put all those bones together. She thought I was going to go like <laughs> Jon Snow from Game of Thrones or whatever with like the mink wrap with the skull on yeah. it. I'm just, I'm still figuring it out. I think if there's a mean iguana out here that fights the other iguanas, so I'm thinking I could put him down, eat him like fried chicken, and then I could cut his spines off the top and make a spine wrap necklace so that when I'm wearing the skull and the spine wrap, all the bad animals that want to be mean and hateful toward one another, they're going to learn that, you know, old Uncle Matty could be hateful too. So, you know, I'm out here with my, letting them know. As I peruse and walk the property, I let everybody, I cast a big shadow around these parts. So, you know, I got to let them know that they ain't going to be running, they ain't going to be running foolish games out here. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this week. We can't wait to start this project. Leave, our, leave your comments down below, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.